Hey everyone, Jordan Yates here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my soldering journey. Today I have this super cute little board. Yes, it's exactly what it looks like. It is a cow, but not any cow, not just any old cow. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this little board into an FM radio. So if you guys love doing little solder projects, then follow along. I will link it below. I got it for pretty cheap off of Amazon. You can get one too. We could solder it together and all tune in. So stay tuned. And if you like what you see, like and subscribe for more. All right, guys, let's go. First and foremost, obviously we have to do a mini unboxing. So here is our cow shaped circuit board. Here are some instructions that come with it. Guys, the instructions are very helpful. So definitely have those next to you if you're going to be following along. We got a little IC and IC socket right here. These are pretty important later on. We got our battery holder because this needs to be battery powered. Make sure you get your own nine volt battery. Then of course, some speakers. These are very loud. I was pretty impressed by how loud these speakers get. Very happy about that. Next up, we're going to have our antenna because how else are we supposed to get that signal for our FM radio? Okay, now here's all of our little components. I am just gonna dump them out. There we go. Time for step one. So for step one, we're going to install a majority of our resistors. These are through hole resistors and they come in three different resistance values. The first one is 10R. We're gonna use it for R4 and R7. I'm gonna take step one a little bit slower and then kind of explain to you the soldering part and see that we're pushing these through hole components through the board, all right? The next steps to come, I'm gonna go through at a faster speed just because I think that you guys don't wanna watch an hour long video. So push those holes through the lead and then pull them through the rest of the way, flip it over and bend the wires to keep them in place before soldering. Now the holes aren't that big, so they probably won't fall out if you don't lay the wires down, but I like to do that personally because I feel like it gets them out of the way and makes soldering easier. Now we're gonna do our 20K resistors. These are going to be R1, R2, R5, and R6. So we're gonna do the same thing again and just push them through the board, lay the wires down, and here's R5 and R6. There you go. I'm pretty sure I forgot to do one of these and I go back and do it in just a minute, so don't call me out just yet, all right? So get those on, and look, we now have 2.7K resistors for R3. Find R3 on the board and push it through. Oh, see, there we go, I forgot to do R1. Let's go back and add it. It's a 20K resistor. Hopefully you can do better than I do and do it as you go correctly. But worry not, we got it on the board. Now I like to prep with soldering paste or flux and just rub it on the joints. Never forget to wet your tip with your sponge and then add a little bit of tinning to it by touching the solder to it before you go. And then there you go, you just start soldering all the joints on. I used to push a component through, flip it over, solder, and then do one at a time, but I find it easier to just go ahead, put all your components through, lay the wires down, and then solder them all at the same time. That way you're not having to readjust constantly. I also find it a bit easier this way because I am recording as I go, so I try to make it a little bit more smooth. So there you go. Make sure you hold the... Um, soldering pen just a second or two before touching the solder to it to heat up the joint. Then of course I like to trim all the leads off because if not they'd be super in the way and just really ugly. So there we go. Step one is done. Yay! Look how Now for step two we're going to be installing our inductors. Our inductors are the little green guys that I'm going to show you just coming up. They look a lot like resistors but they're a little chunkier and a little bit shorter. So I think these inductors look fun. We also have that little one I showed you is a crystal oscillator. An oscillator is not an inductor, but they just have it in the same step because we only have one oscillator. So get all your little wires bent and ready to push through. So the symbol for inductor is usually L. That's why we have it on there in L1 and L2. And for those ones, we are having the um, one micro Henry. And then we have our L3, which is the 0.1 micro Henry. And now this one I struggled with, the little oscillator, because the leads, I was so afraid I was going to break them off. I was like, no, I have to be gentle. What if I push it down? They're so tiny. But guys, it, it was fine. So don't, don't freak out. It's not that fragile. 
Now for my favorite part, we get to do the soldering. Guys, it's okay if your solders aren't perfect. Just make sure that you're filling the joint and the lead is connected and it's not gonna fall through. We just wanna make sure it's completely full and completely done. Not every joint has to be absolutely beautiful. If you want it to be beautiful, take your time by all means, but don't be down on yourself if it isn't. Okay, just make sure it's functional. Then we'll work on making it pretty. And of course, we're gonna cut off all of our leads as we do, as we go and get ready for step three. Now, here we go, step two done. Step three, time to install some capacitors. We're going to have the C103 capacitors, which is gonna be C2 and C12. These also don't have polarity, so it does not matter which way you put them in, just get them through the holes for C2 and C12. These ceramic ones are nice because they don't have polarity, but once we get to the aluminum capacitors, they will have polarity, meaning there's a plus side and a minus side, and we'll need to pay attention to that. Now just solder these on as we've been doing. There you go. And get ready to clip the leads. Always my favorite part, also the easiest part. Awesome, step four. Time for the other capacitors. These once again, no polarity. We just need to push them through. And here we go, we are gathering them. This is going to be our 473 capacitors for C6, C14, and C15. And then we're going to have a 102 capacitor for C13 and get them all soldered on. This one I struggled with a little bit on some of my soldering joints, but then I had them come together nicely. I'm just so stubborn and will use my piece of solder to like the very last inch when I should probably not and just have a longer piece for safety but learn from me. All right, good job guys. Now for step five, we're going to install our little IC. So this one, we're going to have to make sure it is lined up correctly. There's a notch in the IC that matches the notch on the board and matches the notch in the holder. So we're gonna push that through. You got it, you got it, there we go. Guys, this took me so long, that's why I have it sped up. There we go, push it through the board. I also struggled with this because the leads are just very, very bendy, but once I got it, I got it. So push that through and then solder this on. And I was pretty excited to do this one. I like the, the joints that don't have the leads come super far through because you don't have to cut them off at the end. And so it just makes a really nice little uh, joint that usually looks a lot better than the ones that are fully through hole. So there we go. We got that on and our step five was complete. Now for step six. This step is so much fun because we get to do the switches and we have three different types of switches. Now these, I don't know about you guys, but like the switches, they're just my favorite part. So we have our first ones we're gonna do, I think I do, yeah, S1 through S4 first. These are all the same. Make sure you have your buttons facing up guys because when it comes time to use your radio, you're going to want those to be facing up. Also, we have to, you know, make sure we put all of them in the right location. So I get these soldered on first just because they don't stay on very well by themselves. So I thought it'd be important to solder them before adding the other switches. So there you go. Practice your soldering and get those all connected. This is fun because it's just a whole bunch of soldering joints back to back. And they're actually spaced out kind of nicely, which is cool because some of the joints on here are very close together and it was stressful to not have my solder leaking between joints and messing it up. Okay, so next I'm adding the S5. This switch is fun because this is your on and off switch, guys. This one's very important. It's a cool little flip switch. So get zoomed in there. I like that this had interesting shaped um, joints as well because, you know, anytime I see something different in these early beginning stages of learning, I just feel like we're, we're learning so much more. And this board has really good learning opportunities because of the different kind of components on here. And this one in particular is a surface mount. Now this is like our only surface mount component and I hate doing surface mounts because I'm so bad at them. But guys, I'm learning, like I actually did this on my first try and I didn't burn up the board. So I think that you're definitely capable of doing it too. Now for step seven, we are going to be installing the aluminum capacitors. These are important, like I said, because they have polarity. So let's go pick out our capacitors and get the right ones for step seven, which are going to be the 22 microfarads. Okay, so the long lead 
oh also we have our uh transistor my bad <laughs> i forgot to mention that so put our transistor through it's the only transistor and then we're going to focus on our capacitors now you could see on the board there's a plus and a minus the hole that has the plus next to it is going to be where your long lead goes through because your long lead is your positive side and your short lead is your negative side and by leads i mean those little sticks coming out the bottom it's pretty obvious which one's longer than the other so you don't have to worry about getting it wrong and then we flip it all over and get these soldered on and there we go just getting all soldered this is always such a satisfying part and something i guess i should note this time that i did different as i finally switched to lead free solder now i think that it works fine but honestly i liked lead solder better i felt it was a lot smoother the lead free kind of feels sticky and it gets in more glops or gloopy i don't know the right word for it but i don't like the lead free as much but i feel like it didn't affect my lungs the way the lead solder did when i used lead solder i had a bit of a cough afterwards even though i had ventilation going so now for step eight we're going to do the bigger capacitors. So these are the 220 microfarad capacitors. Now the capacitance is on them, so you don't have to worry. Once again, they look the same as the 22 microfarad, but the capacitance is written on the side. So just check that out and you guys will be just fine. So now you're going to solder these on and guys, we are getting so close. We have almost all of our passives on and we're really getting really close to the board being done and just getting to do the final assembly and the final reveal. The final re reveal for this one is just so exciting because like my last one was uh, the Christmas tree lights I did and that was cool. But like, guys, this one has noise. Like it's not just like your own project, like you're tuning in to a radio station. It's so cool. Now for the LEDs. You guys know I love LEDs. These also have polarity. So make sure the long lead goes through the positive side. And you're going to solder these on. There you go. Believe it or not, you're soldering something else on. So if you're new to soldering like I am, because I feel like if you haven't been following along my journey, it's very obvious that I'm very new to this. Um, this is good practice. So just, just keep practicing. Now for the battery. So this battery, I struggled with at first because I didn't realize, because <laughs> I didn't read the instructions all the way through. I just started doing it. Um, you do solder this on, but something I'll recommend is in this step, you also put the screws through it. I would do that first because when I didn't put the screws through at first, I almost wasn't able to fit them in because I didn't have it lined up super well. So I did that off camera because I had to like shove it in. So do the screws first and then do the solder. That'll make it a lot easier and probably smoother for you. Learn from my mistakes, please. So there you go, you're going to screw those on. This is what's gonna hold your nine volt battery. And again, the battery does not come with it, so make sure you go get a battery on your own. There you go. And oh my goodness, <laughs> this step guys was so hard. So I'm not incredibly sure, but I'm pretty sure you need to strip these wires. I have wire strippers, but these wires were like really small. So when I strip them, it like, I accidentally cut them off a few times and trimmed them a little bit too short and the wires inside were really brittle so I would try to get them ready to solder and then I'd break them off so I barely had enough wire by the time it was done. I think you can possibly melt through the rubber around it and just melt it to it as long as your wire touches the metal parts we're trying to conduct. So you need to have that metal to metal or whatever the material is that it, it is. You don't want it to be rubber to the metal joint or rubber to the metal back of the disc because then it's not going to conduct your um, the electricity that we're trying to send it. So just make sure that there is the conducting materials touching however you decide to go about that. But all I'm saying is if you get frustrated with this step, you're not alone. I was trying to use <laughs> these wire cutters as wire strippers and it's a very different tool. I, I struggled a little bit, but nonetheless, I did get it to work. When I was doing this, I told myself that if my radio failed and didn't work, that it was probably due to this step. But when I went to turn it on for the first time, it worked just fine. So you guys should be okay too. It's always the most satisfying part is when it actually works the first time. All right, now for step 12. This step is the easiest because there's no soldering. We just go in and we screw on our antenna. 
So just put it there, make sure it's facing the correct way, hold it up. And I struggled with a screw bit at first because I was being lazy and I didn't want to go get my screwdriver. And I thought, oh, I could just do it by hand and get it on there. And then I thought, oh, let me try using my wire cutters as a screwdriver. Nope, you just go get a screwdriver. Don't be lazy like me. So then I went back and tightened everything else I used my hands to tighten and it was very helpful. So get a screwdriver while you're at it. Uh, nice Phillips head. And then we're going to add the bolt on the back just to keep it in place. We love a good tight joint. And there you go, guys. We are so close now to add the legs. So make sure you line it up to where the pads are able to be soldered. I struggled a little bit holding this in place, but it's a pretty forgiving leg. So if you don't have it perfectly straight, it's still going to stand up. It just comes down to how nice you want it to look aesthetically. So keep that in mind. Get your one done and then you're gonna go and put your other leg on and you'd think the second leg would be easier but i kind of struggled with this one almost more <laughs> sometimes i get in my head and try to be a perfectionist about something because i'm like i'm teaching you guys how to do it it needs to be done right but guys like that's just not reality sometimes things aren't perfect and they are still okay look at that do you see my dog in the background <laughs> Okay, so now I am going to put the battery in. Some instructions on how to use it, and here we go.